Okay, so it is bright and early on day two here of 3D Printopia in Bel Air, Maryland. Mm -hmm. And we got Luke from Luke's Lab here, and he has a product called the Chubby, but I'm not allowed to call it the Chubby because it has a proper name. It does so, have a proper name. Okay, so what is it called? And uh, please don't smack me for calling it the Chubby, because I like calling it the Chubby, and he doesn't like when I call it the Chubby. So I'm gonna stop calling it the Chubby. What do you have, Luke? Is it out of your system? Chubby. All right, now we're good. Okay. So, uh, the real name for the Chubby, as uh, Nero likes to call it, is uh, the Chub Compact. So, here today we have a, a couple examples. So, on this table, uh, we have some, you know, of our traditional hot end solutions, but we mostly are trying to feature the Chub Compact. So, here it is in uh, several different tools. Yeah, go ahead, take that, pick it up, move it around. Uh, here it is in the A4T, so like all of these things are, are ready to go, ready to go when, when these things arrive. And of course, a particular interest to uh, assume you to a Nero, the stealth burner. Look at that, it fits, it works. Yeah, because I have a tube and I have it in a printer and whatnot, but they're kind of big, they're kind of long. They don't really fit in the existing kind of ecosystem of 3D printers. This now solves that, the compact that, solves that. That's exactly right. So this is uh, 47.2 millimeters long. Um, and uh, it supports uh, six by 16 or six by 20 heater. We're shipping it with the six by 16 out of the gate and just a standard thermistor, standard V6 nozzle. But here's the thing, it might be small and you might see some heat sink fins here. Look at all this melt zone. So this is 33 millimeters of melt zone, the same melt zone as a slice Magnum Plus in the length of the original Mosquito is really the connection point. So our beta users have been testing the crap out of these. These have been out in the field and getting real world uh, use since April and people have been using them and we're really excited to actually bring them to you guys out there. Other than that, you can see one here, like it's even an ant head in a rook. So it's like if you cut it, you put it on a grain. So, it, <laughs> so the advantage you have here is this is pretty much drop-in compatible with most existing ecosystems right yeah. now. You don't have to go out and install a, I'm assuming you have a takeoff tool head somewhere. Yeah, yep, right there. Yeah, so right now, like I have one, I have a full-size tube installed in a big takeoff tool head, but this requires some pretty heavy modification of your printer if you want to go this route. Correct. Whereas if you are running a, a Voron right now, or in my case, a Venture XL, and you already have a stealth burner <laughs> on it, you just print two-piece hot end mount and throw yep. it right in. Put it right in, yeah. We we worked with every developer that we could in order to get uh, compatibility out of the gate and to get feedback, right? Like we yep. uh, we really wanted to make sure that this is the correct product for the market and here it is. So it's smaller than the existing tube. Yep. So how much flow rate are we looking at here? So some of our users have reported up to 60 cubic out of a 0.4 nozzle in this small package. Oh, nice. Yeah, and so that requires obviously uh, the, the correct filament and a uh, high power extruder. So on a clockwork here, um, this cube I believe was printed at about 45 on a 0.4, right here at the show. And that's looking pretty clean. That's on this machine right yep. here. Exactly, and this one just has a standard clockwork, so. I really love the fact that it's drop-in compatible. You don't need any special connectors. It uses yes. standard V6 nozzles yep. that you, me, and my grandma has a dozen of somewhere. So That's a cool grandma. <laughs> <laughs> so looking at the construction here, it's a bit shiny. So what do we got, stainless steel? Nope, yep. the uh, outside tube, just like mainline tube, is titanium, not stainless steel. Oh. The, uh, lower, the lower shield is stainless steel because it's foldable and bendable. Um, but something new that's coming with every single compact out there, it'll come for the mainline tube eventually. It's got a booty as a sock, yes. So this is the same high temperature socks that we're specking for the Pika. It'll be good to 300 C, continuous, fun functionally continuous. It fits right over the end of it. You can install it with or without a nozzle. So uh, we made the geometry special. By special, I mean we just tried really hard. Um, to in so you can install your nozzle separately or you can install the sock with the nozzle on for ease of use. Um, has great grip and it should survive a very long time. Awesome. I cannot wait because uh, I've got like two builds that are, these are gonna be going into. So yeah. I'm gonna be picking up some goodies for you after the show. We, we got you. Awesome. So that is the, me fighting the urge to call it a tube again. That is the Tube Compact from Luke's Lab. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to LDO Motors for sponsoring this year's 3D Printopia coverage. For printer parts, kits, accessories, and more, check them out at the link in the description below. So we are here at 3D Printopia with Rain Motorsports here, and they have some of the newest, hottest 3D printing tech in the world, but not here, not now. We have wood and very loud stepper motors because this is this old printer and uh, we're gonna go on a little bit of a history lesson here. So Rain, what do we got? Hey, so we have a 2010 Cupcake Mark IV extruder, 2010 Cupcake with a Mark uh, V extruder. We have a MakerBot Thingomatic with the Mark VII. Now, are 
all these functional? Because you got some of them are printing right now. Everything here is functional. Been having a little bit of a power problem today, but this is the first time I've had all three of these printing at once. We got a bunch here. We'll get to the rest in a minute, but uh, you've sourced all these relatively recently. I know you just yeah. like kind of recently started collecting older prints. Yeah, I mean, the, this thing was probably a few weeks ago. These were within the last couple of months. Man, it, it is surprising how far we've come in, what, about 10 years roughly? Yeah, well, these 15, really. 15, yeah. So those are the Maker Bots, the, the cupcakes and thing matic What do we got over here? Replicator, so this came out in 2012. This one's bone stock. It was printing when the power cut off earlier. That was printed last year. I'll be honest, the print quality ain't that bad, like yeah. surprising. That was in Pet G, so it's not too stringy either. This belonged to an 80 year old gentleman who met me last year here and wanted this refurbished. And then eventually I traded him out for something else. So it has a Flash Forge uh, Mark 10 tool head in it. On the bottom, there is, uh, that one's nearly stock, except it has print extruders. The brick drone Kickstarter was started on that printer. And then next to it, we have this uh, single head I got offline for $31. That is in surprisingly good condition too. Yeah, it still has a little, the little tag that says to remove before using, still on it. Was it pre-assembled? Yeah. Okay. I believe most of these were shipped pre-assembled. Okay. These you built yourself. Did you build any of these or did you get most of these pre-assembled? No, you know, I've, I've gone through them. Like this one's been completely disassembled, but all of these were acquired together. And then down here we got some printer bots. Yep. The simple metal I got for $10 in Pittsburgh, and I was avoiding collecting the printer bots. So uh, once I got it, I'm like, all right, I gotta get the plywood ones. Yeah, so you got a printer bot simple and the plus. And how much did you say you paid for the simple metal? The one in the middle, $10. Okay, I paid more for mine. You got a better deal than me. I think I paid like 30 bucks for mine. And then we got some Aldi makers here. Yeah, so you might remember this for the last two years I've had it here. Uh, and this is my one that runs Clipper. Uh, input shaping, uh, 10K XL, has an inductive probe bed sheet. And then we have a completely stock plus with a heated bed, which is the big feature. Yeah, these motion systems, you know, yes, it's wood and yes, they're ancient compared to modern printers. They can move at a surprisingly good rate if you are feeding them with a modern motion controller, yeah. motion, modern motion planner and whatnot. And then we got, what is that, a Prusa Mark Zero? Wow. So originally, let's see if I can find the picture real quick. I don't know if you can get a good view of that. But on the left is what that looked like when it came to me. Oh wow, so you so had to, you had to really So it's this. more of a Mark II now, but the person who actually owns this would like to keep a three millimeter tool head. So we haven't uh, finished developing a modern three millimeter tool head for it. Okay. And then we got a maker gear here. Yep, M2 Rev H, last one they made. And then a Mark III S, which isn't that old, but yeah, when you think about it, old. it's 2018. It's, it's starting to get old. Yeah. And then, these are some cool ones back here. So this here, for the E3D fanboys, this is a good old fashioned big box with it, dual nozzles. And it actually printed all your maker chips here. Scan the QR code to go to a fun place. And this one's actually printing right now. Yep. So it's an acrylic frame. What are these like tabs and screws? Wow. That's one way of doing it. Belt tension, made in Britain. God save the king. And then we got some Lulz bots. It has four, bootish nozzle. It's got plywood in the hot end. It has a resistor for a heater. Wait, plywood in the... Yes. Oh, jeez. Okay. And then this is a TAS 5 with a dual extruder. TAS 6, you're getting into the, the modern end. It, like a Voron 2.4, yep, yep. it homes Z here. And for bed leveling, it taps all four corners. Yeah, because the bed itself is a conductive, so they put these little pucks in the corners to allow that. And then we got a VZ Bot, Bot 400. And then a solid, oh wow. That one's a project. It's uh, pretty far apart. I put a 24 volt bed heater on it. I haven't touched it since. But like just that angle iron and rivets basically. And jeez, one way of doing it. And then a second cube. What's left of mine? I have one too. I, I think I have a newer one, but yeah, mine's in about the same state. Oh, and then we got a legacy. Not that old. Okay, now we're getting a little too new. I mean, to be, oh shoot. Uh, but now to be fair, the Voron 2.4 is over five years old now. 
Yep. It, it came out in 2020. It's there's been updates and revisions, but it's getting it's there. Starting to get it become an old printer. Just one of the biggest takeaways, other than the fact that these are, you know, wood, is cable management and like wire management and how much that has oh changed on my printers. God. Do you see the mess on this yeah. thing? And this was the norm. These were machines you bought from a company, and this is just I added this bit of cable management here. Well, like that's just how it was back then, and it was acceptable. And then compare that to, you know, not even 10 years later, and you're looking at machines like this. So that is really cool. That was. So that is Rain Motorsports, yeah. this old printer and its collection of uh, antique wooden plastic extruders thingies. <laughs> Thank Cheers. you. And what kind of flow rates are we looking Ladies at right here? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, everyone here, a great Princeton is now. <laughs> I'm trying to film, Joel. <laughs>